Hi there folks, my name is Mike. Welcome back to the SDL series. I hope you've been enjoying it. Like and subscribe if you have, but let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Now today's topic, I'm going to be talking about something which I've loaded up in this other window, which is blending. But in order to demonstrate that, I want to review some of the code that we've written in previous videos and demonstrate how blending works. So let's go ahead and review our code and see how this works. So previously, if you recall, we've been able to have this program here with a window, initialize SDL, uh, create the window and the render. And then we've previously worked with things like setting the color key. It's in fact what allows me to not have a background behind me. I'm able to mark certain keys as transparent. And just as a reminder of what that looks like. So for example, if I uh, run this program, we've had something like this in previous lessons where I have this Kong character and you can clearly see that if I draw a line through it, that there's no background image. It's got some transparency either in that image or the specific color we have marked, which in this case was 255, 0, 255. So you can check out a previous video on color keying and having the transparent backgrounds uh, if you need a refresher. But otherwise, the things that we've been doing are, well, loading up image data. So we do that in a surface in SDL, which means to take some image format, all the pixels and load it in a surface, which is just some generic uh, data type that SDL2 can work with. And then what we do is, well, since we're using a hardware accelerated render, we can ship off those pixels, that is send the pixels from our surface onto something called a texture, which lives in the graphics card with the GPU memory and renders things very fast. Now, what are we going to actually draw to all these pixels, whether they're coming from the CPU and a surface directly, or the GPO texture, and that is typically a rectangle. So that's what we're going to copy uh, what sits in memory from somewhere onto a rectangle and draw, you know, our uh, Donkey Kong or whatever uh, image that we want. So how do we do this? Well, we're building real time applications. So we have a loop here. This is our main game loop. Let me just highlight it all here so you can see it. And again, typically that loop is an infinite loop handling input events, doing any updates to our drawing, and then finally uh, copying uh, into our uh, our texture to our rectangle to give us specific shapes, and then finally presenting that render to us. So sort of flipping or refreshing the screen with a new image. OK, so now that we've covered that, let's just modify our program a little bit. And my goal is just to get two textured images. OK, so to do this, I'm going to, uh, in a way, sort of uh, cheat here and just create a second rectangle. And I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm just going to call it rectangle two here uh, just to make life easy. So you can see me doing that here and saving. And let me go ahead and just do our uh, render copy here and make sure that we have our uh, second rectangle. OK, so when I run this, uh, let's see what happens. And if I go ahead and present the screen again, you will see that we have the same uh, image. Nothing's changed. So why hasn't anything changed? Well, again, if I look quickly at this, I did a copy and paste and the uh, X and the Y coordinates are the same. So the images are effectively overlapping each other. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of interactivity into this. And what I want to do is just move one of the images with my mouse. Uh, so as you might have seen, I have the SDL event page loaded up here. Just a refresher for how do we handle events? Well, we want to handle those in our uh, event loop here. The, the queue or the uh, that's constantly looking for different events that we want to handle. OK, so just as a refresher, uh, we want to check for some sort of event that has happened. Here are our SDL events. Here's the type of events that we have. And I'm going to just do something simple where, where we move the mouse, the image moves with us. So that's a mouse motion event that we want to handle. And this particular event has certain uh, fields associated with it, uh, particularly the X and the Y position that our mouse is moving. So let's go ahead and just handle that. So if I have an SDL mouse uh, motion event, then I want to set rectangle two and the X position to, well, whatever our mouse position is. And likewise for the Y. So let's go ahead and set that up. So rectangle 2.x equals the event.x. 
and rectangle 2.y equals the event dot y. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to compile this. And oops, I get a little uh, error message here. And let me go ahead and just check what I've done here. SDL um, mouse uh, event motion type. Oops, I've made things a little bit too um, easy here. We want to check if the uh, type was SDL uh, mouse motion here. So let me follow the documentation, show you how I fix the errors. Mouse motion. Uh, and then I'm going to have to handle these two. Now I can get the X and the Y position using uh, something a little bit easier, like getting the mouse state. Um, but let's go ahead and see if I can just um, do it through the event. So that's a little bit uh, better. Oops. Uh, let's type SDL twice. So this will be uh, one error handled, and then I'm expecting the other two here. Um, so let's go ahead and just read through here just for a moment. Uh, motion. And let's see. Mouse motion is member SDL event. And when we have an SDL mouse motion, you would access it through the events motion field. Okay, so there, this event that happened here, event.type. Uh, and let's go ahead and look at that struct again. And again, I want to show you these sort of bare bones navigating through the um, the actual structure here. So here's the data fields here. And if there is some motion event here, then we can get the uh, X and the Y here. OK, so uh, let's do dot motion here and dot motion. OK, and let's try to rerun and good to go. OK, so let me just uh, make this a little bit bigger just for a moment for folks who are uh, following along and want to see this uh, block of code here that we wrote for getting the mouse X in the Y position and updating our uh, rectangle position. OK, and when we compile this and let me go ahead and run it. And if I bring my window in here, you can see that Kong is now moving along with my mouse. Now it is moving with the top left corner. So if your expectation was you might want to set the uh, position relative to say whatever the image width is times half. So you can sort of center this, but this is good enough for the purpose of what I want to show in this lesson. Okay. So the second part of this lesson is to talk about blending. And that is what happens when two Kongs overlap. And in this case, they just sort of override each other. Now, sometimes this could be the desirable effect. And in this case, we just follow the algorithm where the first thing that was drawn would be in the background. And then we're just overlapping it with the current figure here, uh, as you can see uh, with the mouse. But sometimes we can do something cooler. And that's where blending comes in. So let me go ahead and bring up the blending uh, page here, which is SDL set texture blend mode. And what this allows us to do is to control what happens when two images overlap. Let's go ahead and take a look. And this is for a specific sort of uh, texture by texture basis. OK, so we can change this behavior. Now, one thing uh, you might be asking yourself is, again, I have two different uh, rectangles here. But remember, there's only one texture that happens to be shared and, and being used on both of those triangles. So let's go ahead and update our code and just play around with some of these options and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and make our font uh, just a little bit smaller here. Um, let's go ahead here. All right. And let's try it out. Let's just see what the texture uh, blend mode does. So where I want to also use this is, well, is it every time in the loop or just once in the texture? Let's just try once and, and see what happens. If I set after uh, recreate the texture, if I run STL uh, set texture blend mode. STL set texture blend mode. And then the texture that we're operating on, which is just called texture in this case, and it is a pointer, so we're good to go there. And then we have these different blend modes. So if I click on SDL blend mode, it's going to support a few. Uh, none, so that's sort of the uh, default state. Uh, blend here, which is just some sort of, well, we got to figure out what this formula is here. But it looks like it's doing uh, something we call alpha blending, which is in a sense called well, we take whatever the source is, alpha RGB is, and the destination, so the second image uh, in this case, and we sort of subtract them. So we sort of get a, a blending effect here. Uh, so we can sort of play around with that one. Let's just try this one here. This one looks pretty easy here. SDL blend mode add. SDL uh, blend mode add. And we'll go ahead and set it there. Recompile our program, rerun it. 
And let's see what we get. Well, now we get our two uh, Kongs, and they're essentially adding to whatever the color is behind them. And if we overlap them, you can see that, well, at certain points, we can still see them clearly because they're, well, just overlapping over each other. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's, let's try out some of the other effects here. And again, the way I want to handle these, actually, so that we can sort of make things a little bit more interesting, is let's handle them by doing a left, middle, and right mouse click. Okay, so that'll give us some more practice with our uh, events. So let's go ahead and just handle those there. And again, I'm going to refresh on the documentation here to see how we handle uh, mouse button events. So with our uh, mouse click and the particular buttons here. So what's the uh, event uh, type? Well, if uh, event.type is equal to uh, a mouse uh, button event, and let's go ahead and see. This will be SDL mouse button down. So we're going to do this on the mouse button down. SDL mouse button down. And then we need to determine, well, which uh, button was uh, pressed, the left, middle, or mouse button. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, check this. So the button, uh, and I'll go ahead and handle this and say if event dot uh, and I need to follow the uh, button that was changed uh, equals SDL button left. Then let's go ahead and set our texture blend mode to additive. Okay. Uh, now, if none of these buttons are being pressed, I want to change the state to just the default blend state and do nothing. Here. So that'll be SDL blend mode none. So I'm going to put this um, below our event here and that's just going to reset the state again of the texture and how it handles blending so no blending by default if i'm not uh, pressing any keys sdl blend mode is not okay so let's just make sure that this much works and oops i've made another uh, mistake with my uh, button event uh, type with the equal sign equals equals Here. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of me so you can just see what that full error was. Uh, if you need to pause the video for a moment, it's complaining about this line. So let's go ahead and fix that because we need to do a uh, quality check. Okay. And it doesn't like this event dot button. Uh, so we need to uh, check the type there. One more time. So if I go back here, and I need to do the event dot type, and again, just taking a moment to read the error message here. It's the SDL uh, mouse button event that it wants here on the left side. So when I see this type of error uh, below here, and again, I'll remove myself out here. Um, the fact that it's giving me a little hint here is uh, pretty useful. So again, let's go ahead and just start from our, uh, what I'm looking for is a uh, button uh, type here. So let me go ahead and again, click on this. And we do need to update the uh, button down or button up. One of the two is being uh, performed here. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, th this is a little bit uh, silly. Let me see if I uh, do the button dot button uh, for our structure um, for our uh, because what we really want to do is just in this event dot button just see if there was the button down event and then we'll check the specific button was it the left right or whatever and that's what's stored uh, here. So there's um, some of the uh, remarks here um, that tell us the button can be one of these events and the event type was a button press. So what was the event type and then what was the actual button press here? Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and see if our program is uh, working as expected. So if I go ahead and bring this in here, uh, you'll notice something uh, quite interesting that the default mode here is that we don't have anything. In fact, we've lost our color key because we've turned off all blending. Um, so, in fact, what the color keying is doing behind the scenes is, in a sense, uh, some sort of uh, transparency, okay? 
uh, or blending mode if you want to think of color key as, as blending itself. So without that, we see the original uh, image here. But as soon as I left click my uh, mouse here, uh, or every time I, I click it here, you can see that we have a different blending. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement the other blending modes. We can see what's going on, and then we're going to try to do a, a cool uh, experiment uh, after this. All right, so I'll go ahead and exit this, and let's go ahead and handle our other blending modes. And I'm going to go ahead and just say else if the button is uh, middle. So that's one of our other uh, options here on the blending mode. Uh, and our other types of modes that we have, well, we have none if we do nothing. Um, blend here, let's go ahead and do that one. Let's see what uh, blending looks like. And then finally, if we have a uh, right mouse, let me uh, paste this in here. Whoops. And just copy these lines here and right mouse click and then we will do the mod okay this is a way to sort of modulate the colors here so the source times the destination Ooh, interesting uh what kind of effect we'll get there well we'll see let's rerun this and let's see oh there's a uh, missing right parenthesis here that's what got deleted and let me put that back in Recompile, we're in a good state here. And let's go ahead and take a look at our Kong image. So I'm gonna left click uh, over it and we see this sort of effect. If I middle click, uh, then we get our sort of default behavior back here where we're getting some sort of uh, blending here with the color key in mind, which is uh, pretty cool. And if I right click, um, it's kind of interesting uh, with the background, what's going on, sort of modulating uh, are multiplying the source times the destination here. So if I sort of uh, overlap them, you can get the different uh, effects here. So that's that's kind of cool here. Uh, but the one that seems sort of most interesting is the default sort of um, additive blending uh, with the, the background here. Um, so I want to go ahead and try a uh, little experiment with this. And I think I'm going to do it in another video where we work with water to create some uh, cool blending effects. So I hope this is interesting. So you got to uh, review here just on the uh, right side, how to handle different mouse events, uh, position things at your mouse, and then of course, set the different texture states for the different blending modes that you had in this video. So I hope that was useful and you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.